What's up guys? I want to show you how I created this. A cool set of curtains. Not only are we going to model it, we are going to animate it and then we're going to add some wind to it so it looks like it's blowing and then you can obviously add that to any of your visualizations. Okay, cool. Let's jump straight into Max. Okay, so now that we're in Max, let's go to the front view right there, front view. Let's go creation, let's go plane, click and drag. For this one, I'll make it 3 meters by 1.5 meters. What's really important is a lot of length and width segments. The more you make, the longer it'll take to animate, but the better quality it's going to look like. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a box, and this is going to act like the rail. So just like that, let's make that 50 by 1.6 by 50. Let's go to the left view because I need to put it more or less in the middle. Because remember, we want the curtains to actually hang on the rails. Top view, make sure that we're happy with where it's positioned. Sticking to the top view, I'm going to grab another plane. And I'm actually going to make the segments one and one. And I'm going to click and drag that right there. I'm going to call this one floor. Let's go to perspective mode. I'm going to grab this guy curtains it's always useful to label things and this one I'm gonna call the rail okay we've got all of our objects now what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this box so that it is going to be attached to the curtain so when it gets animated the curtains will follow and then we're gonna also include this as the floor so when the curtains fall onto the floor it will interact with that as well first thing is first what we need to do is click on the curtains modifier let's go to modify list press C for cloth right over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on object properties. Right there we've got curtains which is perfect. Add objects, click on the floor, click add. On the floor make sure you click on collision object because it is going to collide with the actual curtains. The curtains will be a cloth. This right here is called presets. Just select anyone you want but makes more sense to put on cotton and then I'm going to click the OK button. Now, what we need to do is we need to go and actually animate the railing. So let's go to front view. This button right here, hierarchy, effect pivot only. I'm going to activate the snapping tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap the pivot all the way to the left of the actual rail. Once I've done that, I'm going to deactivate this. This is where the animated part needs to begin. Make sure you're on frame zero. Click auto key, everything turns red to say that we are going to animate something. Click this button here which says set key. Let's scroll to let's say the 25th frame. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the scaling tool, so R for shortcut, and I'm just going to scale it just like that. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to click the W, which is the move tool, and drag it downwards. Deactivate that. Scrolling left and right your box should look like this. So it's shrinking and it's going downwards. Let's go to frame zero now. Click on the cloth. I want you to go to the cloth, the arrow, and click on group. Once you've clicked on group, I want you to select the top set of vertices. Then we're going to make a group. You can call this anything you want. You can leave it at default. That's fine. Click the OK button. Now, what we're going to do is, or what we are doing, is we are attaching only these vertices to the rail because we want the curtain to only be attached by the rail so when it moves there's going to be a nice sway to it and it'll make sense once you see the animation so now that we've made that group we have to attach it a certain way there are multiple ways of doing this from using sticky surface or just surface the method that I do is node clicking node and then clicking the box and you'll see there group 001 node to rail awesome now go into the cloth right over there Let's zoom out. Let's go to perspective mode. And now that we've got the actual object selected and we've done everything that we needed, one little trick that you can do as well is click here, self collision. Tick that on and set that to a one. Now what that is going to prevent is the actual object, which is our curtains, to overlap one another and actually collide with one another. So this is basically going to prevent that from happening. So all we need to do now is click on the simulate button. Now, depending on the strength of your PC, this could take a while. Again, depending on how many length and width segments you've actually put on the plane. So I'm going to let this finish and then we'll continue. Okay, now that that's done, if I scroll all the way to the left and simply click the play button, look how cool that looks. Very, very easy, very, very cool to do. And now obviously we have these beautiful curtains. The next thing that I want to show you is how to add a wind modify to it to simulate as if wind is blowing behind the curtains. So there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to prepare for this. Number one is we need to remember that the curtain is tied to this rail. 
So now we could technically delete the rail. So if I had to delete it, obviously the curtains would still work. That's not an issue. But we want it still to be tethered to the rail when the wind is blowing or guess what? The curtains will actually just blow away completely. So this is my procedure to do it. We animate it on the 25th frame with regards to the actual railing here. So what I need to do is go past the 25th frame. Any frame is fine, past 25. What I want you to do is select both of these keyframes that we created for the box. So make sure the box is selected, past frame 25 and delete those two. Now what's happening is that we've deleted the box, which is awesome because we don't need the box anymore for the animation, but we still need the curtains to be tethered to this. The next step, what you can do is we need to kind of pick a frame that we really, really like of the curtains. The reason being is because if you look over here, the curtains start there and end all the way there. So we can't have the wind blowing from, let's say, this frame or even these frames. It's got to be a frame past 25 because then it will actually still be tethered to the rail. So I'm going to pick, let's say, frame 17. That looks really, really good to me. Clicking on this object, it's really important to click set initial state. You can set this in stone by right clicking and say convert into a poly. Now, if I do that, we lose the cloth modifier and have a look. The animation is actually gone. So we don't really want to do that now. If I click on the cloth modifier and I click set initial state, at first it appears nothing has actually happened. But have a look here. I can still animate or rather I can still scroll through the entire animation. But look what happens at frame zero. Frame zero is the beginning now. So we've basically convinced Max that frame zero is where it should start. The next thing that I want to do is I need to create a wind force. So underneath creation, underneath right over there, forces, we're going to grab wind. Let's go to the top view as always, click and drag, perspective mode. Now you can obviously experiment with this. You can obviously choose the direction, the strength. There's so many parameters that you can play with. I usually put it at an angle like this and let's put this at a five. So we need to click on the curtains now. We need to go to cloth forces, select the wind we just created, click this arrow here. So the forces in simulation right over there, click the OK button. The next thing you need to do, and this is where a lot of people go wrong because the animation just doesn't work, you need to erase the previous simulation. So clicking right here, see it says simulated frames 101, click erase simulation, and as you do that, simulated frames is one. Now if I scroll through, nothing's happening. Now it is technically the same as converting to edit poly, but I did not want to do it there at poly root because I wanted to keep all the information that we did with the cloth, otherwise you had to redo all of that. So now that we've done all of that, the only thing left is to simulate. Okay, now that that's done, let's scroll all the way and have a look at our new animation. Let's click the play button. And there you can see, beautiful curtains blowing in the wind. And the last step that you can do this, just to make it a little bit extra, let's pause that. Let's grab the modifier shell and let's add a small shell modifier to it just to give it a little bit of thickness. Let's put that at a three mils for myself. And there we go, beautiful curtains blowing in the wind. And again, remember you can animate this any way that you want with regards to the railing. And there we go, beautiful curtains blowing in the wind. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, I'll catch you in the next one.